on this program. We're delighted. Uh, tomorrow you'll meet more than a dozen Danish MPs. Briefly, can you explain to me why is such a meeting important? Hmm. Usually, it's a different country, uh, some parliament, uh, usually you see they sh showing you see, their uh, concern about you see, Tibet. So these people you see, come to see me, and then uh, I usually you see, uh, consider that the parliamentarians are the representative of the people. So it is quite clear among the people, you see, there are, I think, many people who are really showing interest about Tibetan culture, uh, like that. So I'm happy. Okay. Then, then usually, you see, when I met uh, uh, parliamentarians, uh, so of course, uh, I thank to them, and they are sort of concerned about Tibet. And then, uh, one particular sort of point, I usually use suggesting the uh, Tibetan environment, delicate situation of environment. Uh, and actually, it is very, very important. According to some Chinese ecologists, you see, they consider Tibetan plateau something very important. Yeah. So, so therefore, uh, some parliamentarians uh, with full cooperation with some Chinese uh, uh, ecologists, then visit, you see, uh, Tibet and uh, study how much damage already done and what we need, uh, some kind of say, uh, realistic sort of plan or scheme. Of course, uh, Tibet is a lot of minerals, so it is really worthwhile uh, yeah. to use mi uh, mineral things, but at the same time, minimum damage about environment. Like that. As a matter of routine, we all know that the Chinese leadership throws a fit at the slightest sign of your holiness meeting with foreign leaders. So obviously nobody respects China for this aggression. But in your view, do government leaders who don't meet you, does that mean, is that equal to that they're not interested in, in the issue and don't care for the Tibetan people? Hmm. No, I don't think, you see, uh, some people maybe not much interest. Uh, I think mainly due to lack of knowledge or lack of holistic, uh, holistic view. Uh, uh, then some, uh, see, uh, not meeting does not mean see, they have no interest or no sort of sympathy like that. That's no problem. And can I ask you briefly for the record, and I even think I know the answer, but Your Holiness, is Tibet seeking independence? No. Uh, having relinquished political power to an elected Sikyong, a prime minister, Your Holiness has remained only, as you told us earlier and as you keep telling us, a religious leader. This should make the Chinese side happy. Has Your Holiness received the tiniest sign that the Chinese are indeed happy with your having relinquished political power? Uh, I simply see, take this decision, uh, not sort of concerned about see, their views. Hmm. Uh, but later, I was told see, some Chinese uh, have the view, uh, sort of the relevant there, a bit easier to one individual person, they can deal. Uh, so, uh, without Dalai Lama, uh, some, uh, even as an elected sort of leader in the exile community. So they may not represent <laughs> the whole Tibetan. Uh, so sometimes they feel uh, better to deal with Dalai Lama. But some say uh, without Dalai Lama it's easier. They can okay. hardliners. They consider Dalai is the obstacle. Actually, not. 
<laughs> Inside China, we know that there are at least 300 million Buddhists, maybe even more. And I understand that some of them, Tibetan and Chinese, also ethnic Chinese, travel to India to attend your, your teachings. How do they perceive and how do they describe to you the conditions for truly practicing their faith in, inside China's border, in, in, in Tibetan areas as well? Many Chinese, Han, Han Chinese. Mm. You see, when they, uh, when they come to see me, uh, most of them often tear. Yeah, they very, cry. very faithful, yeah. very faithful. And then some intellectuals, uh, they're really showing uh, interest about Tibetan Buddhism. You see, I usually describe Nalanda tradition. Although it's the same source, the Chinese Buddhism also used to come from mm. uh, Nalanda. Uh, uh, then, so, but you see, the uh, rigorous study is concerned. I think a Tibetan, over a thousand years, you see, we kept very, very, impo uh, very, very much emphasis, the rigorous study, many textbooks. So, so there are many Chinese scholars. Buddhist scholars and a Buddhist practitioner. You see, they very much appreciate a Tibetan knowledge about I mean, the knowledge tradition. So many Chinese are very, very eager to learn more from our tradition. And then uh, among Chinese Buddhists, uh, many of them follow Tibetan Buddhism. But is it possible for them, and also, I think, for, for Tibetans to practice Buddhism as much as they want? I think practice, I think practice means, you see, the mental training. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody can <laughs> interfere with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, you see, for study in, in Tibet, yeah. nowadays, you see, there, uh, now there is some improvement. Otherwise, now for example, the Drebu Monastery. Drepung. Drebu in Monastery. Lhasa. Oh, yeah. In Lhasa. Yeah. Uh, in, before 1959, when at, at the time of my final examination, the uh, number of monks, then uh, seven to 8,000 monks. Yeah. Well, now it is, recently I met one Tibetan. And I ask, is how many monks in Devu Monastery? He say less than hundred. Yes. No proper teacher. No sort of what is the serious sort of study. So great damage. But why is this? Do you think? Uh, they actually, in the past, you see, I think a few few months ago, uh, no no no, few years. You see, in, 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 in ego, you see, there is a lot of restriction. Yeah. Oh, and monk remaining, I mean, some monk come from different part of Tibet, they expel. Okay, yeah. Oh, so and then, is... then also, you see, they no proper sort of, what's the, uh, sort of, what's the, study, and most of the teacher okay. disappear. So in that in way. In 1959. Yeah. Thousands of scholars yeah. put in prison and through torture, through starvation, yes. most of them gone. And some handful reach India. Yeah. Then, uh, then also you see they stepping up political education. Yes. So then, uh, and also you see a lot of restrictions and to monastery, like that. Yeah. So now things, you see, comparatively now th some sign things improving. That is good to hear. You, you touched briefly upon ecologi ecological preservation and even talk about the third pole. Tibet is blessed with vast natural resources and the regional major rivers all originate mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Tibet. What does this mean? Um, if you can say that in few words, I know it's difficult, to the Tibetans, to the world, and to uh, Tibet's uh, neighbors in particular, these resources. 
how should we share? Yes, I think uh, over a billion human beings' life depend on this river. Yeah. So in India, uh, many people now uh, showing their concern you see, about some damaging, you see, the, what's the, the environment inside the bed as a result of pollution of water. And also some Indian, let's say, even officials, you see, showing some concern. The uh, constructing, what's say, the dam. Yeah, oh. the dam. Many years ago, one refugee from uh, East Dagestan, or Xinjiang, yeah. he told me that in early 60s, uh, let's see, he, he told me, Oh, eventually, uh, the Communist China may, what what call divert, divert the, the rivers. these major rivers to north. You see those desert area. Oh, uh, you see, used for those desert area. Yeah. So at that time, I felt that's I think he come from, I mean, same sort of situation. So as a refugee, so a little bit. Uh, exaggeration <laughs> to accuse the other. <laughs> yeah. uh, recently, you see, the, the, his sort of was the fear s s uh, becomes a little bit true. <laughs> a little bit more realistic, yes, because China is indeed starting yeah. to divert the rivers. Oh. Yeah. The so some Indian really is expressing their concern. Yeah. Oh. There is another. There are many discrepancies, but one dis discrepancy between China's Tibetan autonomous region, the lesser Tibet, uh, it's only half the size of the Tibetan plateau. And the Tibetan plateau is one quarter of Chinese, of the Chinese area. There has been some discussion between yourself and, and the Chinese about what is actually Tibet, the borders. Is it, uh, could you look at it from a different view that you Instead of talking borders and, and terri territory, mm. you talk people. So that you, like the Roma in Europe, they are a people. They don't care about borders at all. So could you meet and perhaps, or, or the Sikyong, the prime minister and China, and discuss Tibetans and their rights and their religious and cultural practice, rather than always talking about borders because this, mm. this disagreement is it's difficult, right? But it, mm. uh, Tibetans altogether, uh. we can... Since we are not seeking independence, mm -hmm. so we fully committed to remain within the People's Republic of China. Then, you see, what we are uh, sort of concerned is, and also telling Chinese government, the, all those uh, areas which uh, Tibetan ethnic groups mm -hmm. remain, uh, the Chinese constitution recognizes it's a certain area, Tibetan ethnic groups area. So you see the constitution sort of uh, arranged or set up autonomous region, uh, autonomous prefecture, autonomous county, autonomous, uh, let's say, uh, so on, like the that. The county, I think, is the no. small village. Uh, yes. Yeah. So therefore, you see, we are seeking uh, all those Tibetan area, which constitution recognized as a place where Tibetan ethnic groups and a set of different degree of autonomy. Now, the preservation of our language, yes. preservation of our culture, uh, these should have same all these area. In the entire oh. Tibetan areas, oh. not only. The administration, yes. that doesn't matter. Yeah. You see, I think Tibetan area, I think divided five, uh, five provinces. Provinces, yeah. Autonomous yeah. region. Uh, then, <coughs> oh, bless sorry. You. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Danish cold. <laughs> well, you should be uh, used then, to that. You see, uh, Yunnan province. Gansu. Yeah. Uh, 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 the Sichuan province. Sichuan. Gansu province. Qinghe province. Qinghai. Like that. Yeah. Your Holiness has hinted that your successor, the 15th Dalai Lama, will not be born inside China. 
or, or that even perhaps uh, the institution of the Dalai Lama will stop with you. So maybe there will be no 15th Dalai mm. Lama if this mm. unfolds. Mm. What does that mean? <laughs> the reality, according to reality, if the, I think this institution, the almost I think uh, six centuries, yeah. uh, before that, this, uh, no this institution, uh, then it developed. Uh, then uh, any sort of institution, man-made institution, sometimes come, sometimes disappear. That's quite normal. So now, I think everywhere, I think future of the world, there's no other sort of way, only a democratic democracy. Yes. Uh, so we, Tibetan, uh, as a small community, we're fully implementing democratic principle like that. So the, uh, at least, I think, fourth century old, the Dalam institution become uh, head of both temporal and spirituality, now that ended. Uh, not due to some pressure, I voluntarily say ended. And institution itself, as early as 69, one of my former statement, I stated, uh, the, what's the, the very institution, uh, if it's the concerned people feel not relevant, then automatically cease. I have no concern. It no. seems to say the Chinese, uh, some Chinese officials are more concerned about that institution. Yes, I believe that this is true. <laughs> I think perhaps, and I hate to say this, that maybe we're running out of time, but I also understand uh, that Your Holiness might have the opportunity to make a pilgrimage to the holy mount Wutai mm. in northeastern province mm. of Shanxi. Mm. It's quite far away from the Tibetan plateau, but it is mm. a, 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 an important mountain. Is this a kind of appeasement from the Chinese side, like an olive branch, like stretching out a hand? Oh, or? many Chinese Buddhists, when I met, when they came to see me, uh, all of them uh, asked me, please don't forget these Chinese Buddhists with tear. Yes. I also feel a little sort of has the feeling uh, some sort of very much touched. These are Buddhist. And then I am Buddhist monk. So it is my duty is to fulfill their wish. Uh, so just the pilgrimage to Wu mm -hmm. Shan. Yes, since fifty four I have sort of keen interest. But then at that time, the, I expressed I want to make pilgrimage to Uteshan. And then the uh, concerned official, they say, uh, no proper ro road. Okay. Oh. So now still, I'm the same person. So still that desire there. <laughs> the road is probably better now. It must, it must I be. I think so. <laughs> There's no question now. Now only political matter, political matter. So, you see, uh, I was told uh, some local uh, Buddhist authority in Uteran, you see, they, uh, uh, I said, there's some repair work, some sort of old mm -hmm. building, the sixth Dalai Lama remained there. Okay. Oh, and then third Dalai Lama also, you see, uh, visited there and he spent some time, I think. Uh, so they, they are expecting. So me too. Then I expressed this to some Chinese officials. Even if I think one occasion of meeting my delegation with Chinese officials, I expressed that uh, strictly non-political uh, uh, connection, just purely spiritual uh, pilgrimage. Then they say, uh, wherever the Dalai Lama goes, political implication always there. They say, now I completely Relinquish or what what call? Relinquish. Oh, relinquish or yeah. politics. So, so a little can, different. Yeah. So we'll see. Yes. We'll see. We what so. interesting thing is, recently a few months ago, one the deputy uh, party secretary of autonomous region of Tibet, 
you see, when he met some Indian uh, media people, media, hmm. he mentioned the possibility of the Dalai Lama's sort of the pilgrimage to Uttarakhand. He actually mentioned there is some discussion going on smoothly. He mentioned, and after a few months, the party secretary, the express very harsh word. <laughs> okay, maybe <laughs> so. I don't know. Is it confusion? Confuse, confuse the signals, different signals like that. Your Holiness, I hope and I'm sure that you will visit Mount Mutai. And thank you very much for joining us today. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you.